Hi guys, it's Kyle Rowe, and this is The Final Whistle. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Rugby Connection Presents The Final Whistle. This week's guest played for Edinburgh, won the Scottish Premiership with AR, tearing it up in the Premiership at London Irish. His captain has deemed him the fastest mullet in the Prem as Kyle Rowe. Kyle, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you getting on? Yeah, I'm not. I'm doing all right. Yeah, how are you? How are you guys doing? Yeah, we are good. We are very excited about this because you're a very popular man at the moment. Just turn up at the prem. So glad you got this opportunity. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks. Um, I feel like I'm just doing my thing at the minute. Not really looking too too far ahead into the future or anything like that. So uh, it's going well at the minute. Yeah, definitely. I mean, scoring scoring a hatchet against Saracens will definitely get your your name. Out there, so. <laughs> well, me me scoring that hat trick, it was more it was more a team effort to be honest. Yeah, that second that, that second try was obviously a good try, but all the hard work was was done for me for the first and the third try. So all I had to re- all I had to do really was just put the ball over the line. Ah, he's too modest. He's not giving himself. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> um, just the first question, Kyle. What actually got you into rugby? Um. Well, it was more when I went to uh, secondary school. So before that, I tried to get into rugby uh, in primary school and just I hated it. So uh, then when I went to um, secondary school, I don't know, the main the main sport there was rugby. So I kind of had to had to start liking it. And then, I don't know, it's just, just followed on from there. Fair enough. I, I'm, <laughs> the same with you, I'm the same with you on that. I, I tried it at primary school because I've seen it on the telly. Didn't yeah. like it because obviously eight grades you have to play touch. I was like, no, I want to, I want to tackle. I want to do what's on the telly, and that wasn't the yeah. case. So, I mean, you got a question for Kyle? Um, to start off more rugby. Um, so obviously I, I'm the resident referee of the show. One because obviously you've done sevens and fifteens. What do you find? What do you like from one or the other, which you think could be implemented? into the other one so if there's something from sevens you like which could go into 15s or things like that is there anything you particularly <laughs> enjoy oh, that's, a, that's a pretty tough question because sevens sevens in my opinion the lifestyle of sevens is so much better than 15s obviously because you get to travel the world you get to play in all these different places well, obviously that's going to be hard to implement into a 15s game when you've got 30 odd games a season That'd be pretty hard to do. And then obviously with COVID and that, it's going to be pretty, pretty impossible at the minute. Um, and then 15s, you're actually, I think you're getting reg- more regular game time than sevens. So you're playing week in, yeah. week out, which for sevens, it's kind of hard to do because you play anywhere between four and six games over a weekend. And then anywhere between eight to 12 games over two weekends. And that, again, that's pretty impossible to do in 15s. So... Um, I don't think I can really merge. I can't. Yeah, you can't really merge the two together. So, um, yeah, I think at the minute they're pretty. They're pretty good the way they are. Well, fair enough. I like that. <sighs> Sticking with the theme between sevens and fifteens, can you explain like the transition between like playing sevens for Scotland and then playing fifteens on a more regular basis? Uh, well, so for me, when I was at Air, that was my first real um, taste of sevens and fifteens together. Although I wasn't, when I was at Air, I wasn't playing, I wasn't really playing sevens. I was more playing Air. I was just going into training and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so that was that was when I got my first taste of sevens, and then after that year, I got signed for the sevens. Um, and I played London, Paris, I played Dubai, and then I did LA, Vancouver, and then that's when COVID hit. Uh, so from so from that point on, I didn't, I've not really done a full season of sevens. So for me, it was quite easy to transition back into 15s as um, I've obviously didn't have a full season at sevens. Yeah, I was training and doing all that sort of stuff. But I was still playing 15s at that time. Fair enough. Um, are you what? Are you hoping to get back into the sevens? What's this whole pandemic's probably behind um, us? 
I mean, at the minute, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy and pretty stable where I am at the minute. Like I'm just taking every game at London Irish as it comes, not looking too far ahead in the future. Um, if if talks open up again, then that's a conversation I'm going to have to have. But I mean, at the minute, I'm very happy where I am. Yeah, no, that's fair. So, man. Um, now on to the question people really want to know. Um, <laughs> anyone who's been involved um, in Scotland or Edinburgh, I have to ask this. Favourite place to go on a night out in Edinburgh or just Scotland in general? Oh, um, Stories from those nights out, if appropriate. So I'd say anywhere on George Street is a very good place to go for Edinburgh. I mean, you've got a lot of places to choose from. Um story wise, I'm not sure I can uh I can disclose that information to be honest. I'm not sure it'd be very appropriate for for this uh conversation. <laughs> that means there's some juicy stories with some names. <laughs> yeah, that's the second one for that's the second person now who's gone George Street. Yeah, who else, who else went George Street? Jamie Hodgson. Oh nice. We're gonna we're actually gonna play a little game. We played it with Jamie. Um, instead of just trying to think of a funny story, because sometimes there's so many or some you can't say, we're just going to rattle off some names from the London Irish squad and you can tell me a funny story about them if you can. Yeah. So we'll start off with Curtis Rona. Oh, Curtis Rona. Uh, he's a great lad, but he'd, um, whenever, he, whenever we do go out for a drink, um, he's always he always fully sends it. So he, he loves, he does, he does love a drink when when he's when he does go out. Story wise, mm, again, not sure I can disclose any of that information. <laughs> this is brilliant. I love the night, um, the night out. Sounds great. Sounds messy because we've actually. <laughs> I'm going to catch him out on this because we've had him on the show, Matt Rogerson. He can he disclosed, uh pre-season camp in Portugal where they had to reenact movies. So like <laughs> him and his group were on a beach in Portugal in Budgie Smugglers doing Jurassic Park. Mm, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, my pre-season at London Irish was obviously a bit more tame than that because you weren't allowed to travel anywhere. Yeah. COVID again mm-hmm. was still pretty rampant. So... Um, not getting any funny stories like that at the minute. Hopefully, hopefully, if I'm there for the next couple of years, when COVID's gone, we'll be able to have some. We'll have some good stories. Yeah. Is there any like drinking about Matt that you've noticed or? Uh, no, not really. He's just he's just recently become a dad, so he's been he's been pretty pretty tame on the on the on the drink at the minute. So it's pretty pretty understandable. Yeah, he's behaving himself for a change. Yeah. Um, last last one for me on the stories, if you can. I feel like he's got some stories to tell. Augustine Karevi. Oh, he's he'll have a good few stories to tell because obviously he's been about for it's been about for years. Again, he's a great lad. Um, I've not been there that long to fully see him uh, have a to have a drink yet. Okay. So yeah, I've not got any funny stories. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid. Is his English good? Because we, we were speaking to Jimmy Hodgson about uh, Buffelli being in Edinburgh and obviously there's yeah. a language barrier. Is there a big language barrier between you and Karevi or is he? No, is he no, not really. His English, his English is pretty good, to be honest. Like yeah. there's some there's some words that he's he's a bit confused on and stuff like that. But all in all, is you can have a full on conversation with him. He's pretty, he's pretty good. Nice. I like that. That's good. Do you know any... Argentinian by any chance? Uh, no, I don't. I wish I'd learned a language in school, but I just wasn't that way inclined when I was younger. But now looking back on it, I wish I'd uh, wish I'd learned French, Spanish, anything. What about the most useful language, Welsh? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> my there, my C and GCSE Welsh gets me far. Uh, I'm not sure how well that would go down, uh, London <laughs> Irish. To be honest, I'm not sure any. Any Welsh would be, would go down well. <laughs> Are there any Welsh boys at London Irish? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so, no. There's a lot of South Africans and Aussies, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is, yeah. 
Um, so, I mean, you got another question? Um, back to rugby again. What you're talking about training in sevens and um, fifteens? What like so fit, more fitness training wise? What's the difference between doing fitness in sevens and fifteens? Like, how do you adapt your body, or what are you doing in the gym, or cardio wise during that time? Um, I'd say gym gym is pretty similar. Both in both areas, you're just trying to get strong, um, trying to just lift some lift some heavy weight to keep the body keep the body strong. Fitness wise, again, get both games are are different. So four sevens, boys aren't going to be as big, but they're going to be much fitter. Uh, running wise, because you've got to cover so much more distance. Uh, in a short in a shorter period of time, so like say for instance you'd cover, so for a fitness session you could do like sixty meters, uh, sixty meters by ten on like a fifteen second rolling clock or whatever, just in a, mm-hmm. as an example that you do like three sets of that you'd pretty be pretty tired after that. Whereas in fifteens, um, you could do the same but you do it over say thirty seconds. Yeah, because I, I referee both quite a bit. Um, yeah. well, not seven season at the moment for refing, but it's like that. Like I have to adapt it how I ref because obviously you're doing a lot longer and quicker sprints and um, stops between in sevens. When in fifties you get a scrum where you kind of standing around for a minute and just yeah. the bottle. So it's a lot. It is very different that side of things. It's like almost it is almost yeah. two different sports. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's that's how I would put it as well. As much as they're the same sport in rugby, they they demand completely different things of the body. Yeah, that's why I don't do sevens. Sevens is <sighs> great. I can watch seven. I will watch sevens all day. I just don't let me play it. I'm not good at it. It's not my thing. I don't I'd have love to go to a sevens it. tournament and just uh, go for a few drinks with the boys. That'd be class instead of going and playing. Have you heard yeah. of the Chester Sevens? Um, I'm meant to be refing at it this year and they've got one league which is like everyone takes everything very seriously and then there's one league where it's like the second team and they're all playing sevens drunk yeah and the referees don't get paid to do this I heard I was talking to one of the refs says, how referees get paid is they're given a beer token so they get unlimited beer over the weekend oh class so, so I take it the refs are drunk as well ref in oh, them probably. games especially in that bottom league I think everyone is yeah. <laughs> everyone is completely pissed which just sounds like an ideal weekend it does sounds class. It does it definitely. Um, you you were at Edinburgh. You signed for Edinburgh from Air, and then you moved to London Irish. How did the move to London Irish actually come about? Well, with uh, with me being at Edinburgh, so I wasn't actually signed with Edinburgh. I was still um, I was still with the Sevens. Okay. So when I didn't get picked for GB, I um, was obviously. Basically, basically, at that point, made redundant, but they wanted to keep me on a training contract. So they put me on a training contract, and it turned out Edinburgh needed like a uh, cover for the wing uh-huh. or back three. So I went in, I was training, keeping fit in case anything happened with GB or with Edinburgh. Um, and then my agent got in touch with me, it was about this time last year, and was like, Oh, London Irish are looking at signing a back three player or a couple players. And I was like, um, so I said to my agent, I was like, I'll take whatever, whatever can come my way. Uh, and then we got in talks, had a had a talk with Deck Kidney, Les, and the defence coach Brad. Uh, and then yeah, the ball just started rolling from there. And yeah, signed for London Irish, and here I am. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely working for you because I think it's like you're averaging like point six tries for every game you've played. It was insane. I was trying to look it up last night, and your stats were frightening. <laughs> <laughs> I've not, I've not looked at any of my stats again. Just taking every game as it comes. Uh, no, that's fair. Um, it is a shame that you, you didn't stick around for Edinburgh because I would have loved to see you, Darcy Graham, and Bethelia as a back three. I think that would be terrifying to deal with. Yeah. Do we again, have Edinburgh v London Irish coming up in like a week or so? No, oh, it's a week, a week tomorrow. Week tomorrow. There we go. That, that's down at yours, isn't it? That's down in yeah, yeah, down yeah. at the Brentford Community Stadium. Yeah. So many on a road trip. <laughs> I'm on placement. Oh. <laughs> yes, <it's... laughs> um, sticking with the back three, Kyle. Um, if you could pick any 
other two players to pair up with in the back three, who would it be? Um, is this players that are playing currently or just anyone in general? Anyone you want. Oof. Um, so I'd say 15 at the minute, you'd either go Damian McKenzie or Will Jordan. Oof. I like that. They're pretty, they're very, they're on top form at the minute. Mm-hmm. Other wingers. Um, I'd just, I'd probably go Ollie Hassel Collins. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'll take that. Because mm-hmm. he's, he's, he's class. We'll, we'll pick Will Jordan at fullback just because we can only have one mullet in the team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Oh, so, instead of, players you want to play with or of your experience it doesn't have to be a story because I think a lot of them we can't say who is the best player you've played with to go on a night out with of all clubs or teams best player um, it's, I'd say it's probably my flatmate at the minute uh, Jack Cook who's at London Irish obviously um, he's played he's been at London Irish for six or seven years uh, when he plays, he's everywhere. Um, he's a he's a good player, and then when he's on the piss again, he's everywhere. Chats to everyone, and <laughs> loves loves a drink. Takes his rugby into the bar. That's how we like to see it. Yeah, that's how you like to see it. <laughs> that was brilliant. So Karis Rona, and and your flatmate is just loves loves a piss up. Yeah. Pretty Probably. much. Um, we've got a question from Sean. He's asked, um, what is your best rugby memory? Oh. Uh, so I'd say... I think I've got three, to be honest. They're all pretty all pretty similar. So I've got one at air when we won the, uh, when we won the double. After we beat Harrius in the, in the cup final... That was obviously class because we'd just won both trophies and that ending was was mental. Um, sevens wise, I'd say just the whole uh, Vancouver weekend because that was the first weekend um, I'd fully played sevens and not got injured. Oh dear! So it, was quite, it was quite it was quite nice to get through a full weekend of actually playing, and then um, for London Irish, I'd say. Um, probably that Saracens game. Although we didn't win, we came back from what was it, thirty-one fourteen down with fourteen men. It was pretty, it was pretty yeah. special. Saracens proper ball. But... Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. I mean, <laughs> we do. It's fine. We don't have any Saracens fans listen to our show because they would all just go away because all we do is <laughs> at this point. Love yeah, Simeon, Love Simeon, bur- Simeon burned that bread by saying that they won a Farmers League, so there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. But it's fine. You got you got a hat trick. We got everyone talk everyone was talking about you. And I mean your try against Newcastle was something special as well. That was kind of came out of nowhere. Uh yeah. So that try, I don't know. Just worked my way in field, found myself the first receiver, and don't know. I just just got the ball and just started running. To be honest, ran back inside, thought I was going to get melted, and then yeah, managed to break a tackle and, and score. I mean, I played wing and fullback. Being first receiver when you wing a fullback is the scariest thing you'll ever do. You just go, oh, I'll just run then. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty scary, but I think in in this day and age, you've got a you got to have that confidence as a winger or a fullback to get in that first receiver role because the ten's not always going to be there. The centres aren't always going to be there. That's why so I changed... Having... <laughs> That's why what, sorry? I changed the refing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think having that in your in your skill set is obviously a great thing to have. No, sure. That's grand. Would you ever change position or are you quite happy being on the line or fullback? Uh, I'm pretty happy where I am at the minute. When I was in school, I used to play 10 and then I moved to centre. And then when I left school and went to Falkirk, that's when I moved to the wing and then kind of just been there ever since. Funny that you mentioned Falkirk because our fan question is from 
Neely G91, and he asked, did you enjoy your time at Falkirk? Oh, yeah, I loved it. The boys there were class. Um, like, that was my first proper season of men's rugby. So actually getting into it and getting into the sport and uh, in the whole men's rugby scene, it was it was class. Good, good. I've played Falkirk a few times and we were never on the good side. <laughs> I've, never just, uh, I've never reffed them, but just any Scottish league, the rugby's just mad. Like I came up from Wales reffing there and I came up here and I swear everyone just wants to run the ball from their own 22 in Scotland. I ref that first game when everyone thinks they're Finn Russell. Yeah, well, that's how that's how it felt playing at Falkirk. It was just like you just got to run the ball from anywhere. Didn't really matter if it came off or not. You just had that freedom to go and just do what you wanted. Which is quite like sevens. I always thought yeah. like some Scottish rugby, like club rugby of 15s, is like sevens a lot of the time just because they will run and pass it from anywhere. It's so backs orientated a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 100%. However, some of the forwards do think they're backs and will try and run it from their own 22. Yeah. Or try and throw throw a fucking three man miss pass. <laughs> Murray, I could see you doing that and then it just getting intercepted. I can't. I, no, I'm not a big long range passer. I'll do it nice and short or just run it myself. Nice. I like if it. I run it myself and make an arse of it, it's on me. It's not It's not anyone else's fault. Then, so. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> um, just a little fun one for you, Kyle. Um, who has the better mullet? Yourself? Or Johnny Hill? Oh, I mean, I'd say Johnny Hill's is longer at the minute. But all in all, I'd say mine's better. <laughs> I mean, the rugby pod did say that you had, what was it, Andy Good said? The dirtiest mullet, which means it, it was, was a good yeah. thing apparently. It was something like that. I, I, to be honest, I took it as a good thing. So if, <laughs> he, if, he, meant, like, if he meant it as a bad thing, then... I, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's a bad thing. <laughs> no, nah, I don't. Th- I don't think so. I mean, you've got the fastest mullet in the Prem, according to Matt. So there you go. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say I'm the fastest, but yeah. Um, Sean's asked, "What is the best game you've ever been to?" Best game I've been to. Um, it's a very good question. Uh, I'd say it had to be um, when I was in school, we went to the Scotland-Australia game. Mm-hmm. So we went as like a, a whole year group and it was just a, it was a great day out. It was probably one of the first times I've been to Murrayfield to watch Scotland. All right. So I think it was it was class, yeah. Fair enough. Good, good game to be to as, as well. Yeah. Um, have you got any personal aims for like the remainder of the season at all? Or... Um... I've not looked too far ahead into the future, but for me, it's just more about, again, just keep on playing well, keep keep on uh, getting regular game time, and like all it like my goal in the future is to obviously play for play for Scotland at 15s. Uh, if that comes this year, if it comes next year, or however long it takes, then I'm not too I'm not too bothered by it. I'm just taking every game as it comes, trying to perform the best I can. Yeah, no, that's fair. I'm sure we'd all love to see that. Winner against England, surely. Winner against England. That would that, that'd be class. Go for it. I mean, I think the way you've been performing for London Irish, you're definitely going to be at least in the discussion before the squad gets announced. Yeah. Because you can cover you can cover fullback as well, which obviously gives you a little bit of an edge. Yeah. Well, you've obviously got uh, you've you've obviously got Hoggy there, who's been again tearing it up in the prem. So, yeah, um, yeah, but you can always come you can always come off the bench because if you can cover, I've always made this really random rule that if you can cover multiple positions, you're better coming off the bench. Yeah, because then you can just slot in, and like yeah. you said, you played pretty much everywhere in the back line at some point. So, it's yeah. like um, what was it Francois Stein, isn't it? He plays everywhere. Francois Stein just plays everywhere and doesn't age either. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We've got one more question, and it's from Jack Stewart. (laughs) He's asked, average kills per game on Warzone. Oh, God. Um, I ask, for those that don't know, me and Kyle are both friends with Jack 
away from the show and away from rugby. How did you actually meet Jack, Kyle? Uh, so I think I've, I've only ever met Jack twice. But the first time I spoke to him was we've got a mutual friend that I used to go to school with, who's my oh, best yeah. mate. So me and him were playing uh, Warzone during lockdown. And then uh, my best mate, Jasper, he, he was like, um, oh, I've got a mate who wants to, wants to come and play. He's pretty, he's pretty good at COD or he used to be pretty good at COD. And I was like, I right, fine, fire him in. Didn't think he was going to be class. And then he'll average like, I don't know, 10 plus kills a game, whereas me and, me and Jasper will average two. Oh, nice. So, I mean... I that, that was a clearer yeah. question that Jack asked me. I'll, t- I'll tell you once we've, once the, the recording's ended about the <laughs> actual question yeah. asked. Because I asked him, I was like, look, we've got Kyle coming on. He was like, oh, that's class. And I was like, you got a question for him? And he wrote the one that I've not said out. I was like, mate, we do record this. I was like, I, <laughs> start, I don't just interview him for fun. And he was like, oh, shit, yeah, um, ask him about Warzone then. I was like, right, okay. <laughs> so, there you go. No, I, w- I went to college with Jack, so. Oh, nice. No. Um, he, he likes to drink as well, funnily enough. Does he? Uh, he does, yeah. yeah. He, he'll talk to anyone and drink anything, and yeah. Rugby odd. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Um, that's all the questions I've got. Simon, mean, you got any more? I know, I'm grand. This has just been an absolute awesome chat, Kyle. Thank you so much for coming on and taking time out of your schedule just to come and blur toss. And yeah. that's all right. That's all right. Thank you for having me. It's been it's you're been more, great chatting to you guys. Welcome. All the best for the rest of the season, and hopefully see you in a navy or white jersey soon. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Fingers crossed. This has been Rugby Connection presents the final whistle. We'll see you next time.